Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. I honestly wanted to spend this first segment talking about LSU in the last four season openers because you know how that's gone. You know that in 2020, in front of a half-full stadium with everybody wearing masks or supposed to have masks on and spreading out to social distance, the defending national championships got absolutely torched inside Tiger Stadium. K.J. Costello, I had to go back and look this up because the number's not burned into my brain. K.J. Costello threw for 623 yards that day. I was in Tiger Stadium. Um, I was doing the pregame show, which we did at TJ Ribs that year. And then frantically drove across town with 20 minutes to kick off, parked and went in the stadium and sat in the seats um, and watched as Mississippi State just completed about every ball they threw for four hours and absolutely annihilated LSU uh, in that game. And then a year later, LSU went out west uh, to US to UCLA and got manhandled, just got bullied. Zach Charbonnet running all over the place. It was just a, LSU just got bullied in that game in the Rose Bowl. Um, UCLA ran for 161 yards more than LSU. Uh, it was a 38-27 game that honestly did not feel all that close. LSU just got manhandled in that game. That's not really any of Brian Kelly's concern. That was before he got here. But the last two games, he has been here. I think everyone understands the circumstances that went around the game two years ago. You had a rush that was really completely overhauled by transfers. Your entire secondary was transfers. Um, your quarterback was a transfer. Your wide receivers were growing up, and um, it was it was a a difficult spot for LSU against a team that was probably better than we thought. Keep in mind, at that point, Jordan Travis hadn't really emerged onto the scene. Florida State. He did start the previous year, but he was a pretty average player in the ACC. We know now for the last two years he was fantastic, and Florida State was one of the best teams in the country last year. Whatever your stance is on whether or not they should have been in the playoffs or shouldn't have been in the playoffs, that doesn't really matter. I think everyone can realize they were good. They had two guys go in the first round of the draft. They had you know, electrifying receivers with great size and a really good college quarterback who won a ton of games and a first-round pass rusher. and like They were a really good team, and they went undefeated. But we didn't know all that two years ago in the Superdome. Mike Norvell was kind of trying to get it into motion there. And so it was two teams that were kind of looking to take the next step up in college football. And LSU was sloppy and clunky in that game. And they lost because, one, they couldn't stop Florida State on third downs. Florida State was 11 of their first 16 on third downs, just continuously sustaining drives and going to get points. And while the defense was competitive, they couldn't win third downs. And inevitably... Florida State put enough points on the board that LSU fell into a hole. And then LSU rallied out of the hole. Jaden Daniels was putting up points and yards. And then you get a huge break late. Florida State fumbles. And LSU takes the ball down the field and scores in the last play of the game. And they get the field goal, the extra point blocked. And you had two muff punts and two kicks blocked. Four massive special teams gaffes that really cost you that game, along with the fact that Florida State was converting every third down they saw. Last season was a weird game to go back and look at. It wasn't weird now that we realized that LSU was bad on defense because they, they were bad on defense last year. Jordan Travis just diced LSU up in Orlando. He threw for um, 342 yards and four touchdowns in that game. Um, but that's not shocking to look back on. What's shocking to look back on is that LSU was a little bit disjointed on offense. Uh, the running game wasn't there. You had a Crucial drop by Kyron Lacey on a big third down in the third quarter, and then Malik fell down on a stop route on the right sideline, and Florida State intercepted it, and that was really the end of the game. But that was the best job anybody did on LSU's offense all year. And I think if you go back and play that game again, LSU probably loses because I think Florida State would throw for 350 yards again, but the offense would be better than it was. The point being is you look and and take all that in totality, like, is that really one thing that LSU hasn't been prepared to do in the opener? No, they, they got the special teams figured out after one week. Muffing punts, they, they put the most sure-handed guys they could back there, and LSU, for some reason, for two years, couldn't catch a punt. I, I have a hard time suggesting that they took a huge risk 
putting Malik neighbors back to run punts back against Florida State in the Superdome. Like, that seems like a pretty low-risk probability. And I have a hard time suggesting that Aaron Anderson can't catch punts. Like, he'd done it his whole life, and he dropped one in the Florida State game. You could point to that because it happened in both games. They practice that stuff all the time. We went out to practice for three first straight weeks. They punted a lot while we were out there. I saw one muffed punt the whole time. Aaron Anderson muffed one the whole time we were out there. Like, that's not being poorly coached. That's just a couple guys dropping the football, and it happens. But it, it, there's not one thing. A defense are just bad all last year. That had nothing to do with the opener. They just they just weren't good. I don't think they were good with personnel. I don't think they were good with scheme. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to find a correlation between the 2022 opener, the 2023 opener, and the 2024 opener. Like, I think those are just separate entities. Brian Kelly's coached teams for a very, very long time. He should understand how to get teams ready to play. He does understand how to get teams ready to play. And he's speaking with a bit of a quiet confidence about this game. I've got some quotes. We certainly don't have the sound because he just got off the podium 20 minutes ago and we've been on the air for eight. Um, but we do have the quotes here that I, I wrote down as he was going. Um, and he was talking about the last two games against Florida State. He said, some of the key guys in those games are no longer here. In those games, you were getting a quarterback ready the first year. The wide receivers were inexperienced. You got two freshman tackles. It's a journey. We're in year three now, and those guys who played as freshmen are going to be playing in this game with all this experience. Those guys that they played against at Florida State, they're going to those games they played, they're going to help them in this opener. There are a lot of guys who had those battle scars from the openers and know what it takes to win an opener on both sides of the ball, whether it's Harold Perkins or it's Will Campbell. They were both here for all that. They're going to impact Sunday in terms of how we play. I think um, there's something to that. Like Those guys know how to ramp it up and, and to play a big game in the first game. I don't think they're going to be surprised by the speed of the game. Uh, that's something that always opens my eyes when I go out to the PMAC and LSU plays those non-conference games against Nichols, who I know beat them last year, but you play North Texas and you play some of these teams, and then all of a sudden you come out for the SEC and like Arkansas or Kentucky shows up, and it's amazing how much more quickly the game moves. That's not going to shock these guys because – They've opened the season with fast games like that two years in a row. They've opened the season with a lot on the line in front of big crowds in, in neutral sites two years in a row. So I think there's something to that that is going to give them some comfortability. I was also interested in Brian Kelly's comments about the defense and how that's got to be better. And this was a, a pretty powerful quote, I think, for a Monday press conference. I know going in that we're prepared defensively. Our guys are excited about playing for Blake. They get the scheme very well. There's not a lot of confusion. I'm excited to watch them play. I think that's um, hopefully the case. Those of us that have been out to practice, and some have been out there a little bit more than me, um, but it, it hasn't been a lot of busts. Like I haven't seen a lot of guys busting coverages. I've seen some guys get beat, and guess what? Sometimes you get beat at practice, especially when you're going against LSU's wide receivers. But I haven't seen a lot of complete busts. My sincere hope and my sincere thought is that they're going to be prepared to play in the game. There may be some jump balls or some, you know, route concepts that Lincoln Riley and four and five star wide receivers from USC and Miller Moss beat LSU on. I don't know that it's going to be a lot of guys holding their hands out, looking around, going, well, who was supposed to be there? It feels like they've they've gotten the scheme down. They're certainly saying that. It remains to be seen. We all know that. It remains to be seen. But it feels like they've got that. That's step one. If you can get past step one, and we can start talking about knocking balls away and making picks and changing games with plays like that. But until you get in the right spot, you can't help. And it feels like that Blake Baker has simplified things and the guys know where they're supposed to be. I, I've said this a few times. I'm not fluent in Brian Kelly language just yet. It takes more time. I'm fluent in Maneri ease. I'm fluent in Les Miles ease. I'm fluent in Ogeron. I'm getting there with Jay Johnson. Um, I'm not fluent in Brian, Brian Kelly talk just yet, but I don't take him as a guy that just blows smoke at the podium. I, I can say this. I, I don't mean this as a negative at all. I just mean it because I, I, I watched it for, for 10, 12 years. Les just blew smoke up there. It just He just he wasn't going to give you much of anything. Everybody's playing well. Nobody's hurt. It's all hunky-dory. It's fine. Even if it's not, it, it, he just wasn't going to change his tune. And that's fine. I don't have any problem with that, but I, I figured it out. 
I don't think Brian Kelly's quite like that. That's a guy that's pretty comfortable. That's a guy that has a lot of experience. He understands when things are not good. He understands when they when they are. And he's been pretty steadfast in suggesting that LSU has has shored up some of the defensive issues. He's never suggested they're going to dominate the SEC. He's never suggested there are four first round picks out there. But he has been pretty steadfast and like, okay, like we know where to be. I'm comfortable that they understand the scheme. And that makes sense. Like, there's a lot of really old guys out there on that defense. Yeah, PJ Woodland gets a few reps here and there. He's young. Yeah, Deshaun Spears is out there a little bit. He's young. You could see Don McKinley maybe play a little bit. Deshaun Womack hadn't played a ton of football that they could be considered young, but most of the guys out there are old. Major Burns is old. Sage Ryan's old. Greg Penn is old. Jacobian Guillory's old. Braden Swenson's old. Savion Jones is old. Zy Alexander's old. Weston Wet Weston Wet Weeks have played a lot. They're old. Like it's it's a pretty old group. And they ought to be able to understand where they're supposed to be on defense. So in to, to sum everything up here, like LSU has not played up to the standard in openers for four years. The first two I don't care about because none of these players were participating and it's a new head coach and a whole new coaching staff. The second two, Brian Kelly is responsible for. And they've got to play better defense for sure, and they got to catch punts. But I don't believe there's some sort of internal problem with LSU preparing to open the season with a good football team. I think you played an excellent football team the last two openers. I think you came up just short two years ago, and you played your worst game of the year last year. That needs to change over the next six days. And Brian Kelly talked about that. He also gave some injury updates. We'll get to those in 15 minutes. Um, Balls around Chris Hilton. And uh, who was the other? I didn't have it written down. I just figured I could remember it. It was Chris Hilton right, and Frazier. Miles Frazier. That is correct. That was the other one. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.